evening of Roastmaster Dale Zawada. Thank you. Welcome to the roast of Rudy Ruiz. You might be asking, why are we having a roast for Rudy Ruiz? That's a good question. I have no idea why we're doing this at all. I was told there would be booze. That's a good way to get me here. But I know it's his birthday, so we're going to celebrate that. Let's bring him out right now to face this abuse head on. Ladies and gentlemen, Rudy Ruiz. Perfected handshake. You ready for this, Rudy? You know it's going to be a long one, right? Solid turnout at least, right? Probably a future ex-wife out there for you. Probably a couple of them, yeah. <laughs> no, it's going to be fun. Rudy always has these stylish hats. They're always very nice. They're always a little Dick Tracy-ish. Don't really understand it. I think you're hiding something, Rudy. You're hiding some shit under there. What is it? It's a sexy bald head. Oh, I love it. Look at that. I've got a boner right now. Can't see it. Small penis. Hmm. So there's that. No, Rudy's a good guy. I'm glad we're doing this for him. It's your 35th? Yes, sir. 35 years old, you guys. Yeah. Nobody cared. They're like... Mm. No, I'm glad we're doing this. I never knew how old you were, Rudy. I just look at you and I'm like, is he 20? Is he 60? What the fuck is going on here? It's hard to tell the age of those people, you know? And by those people, I mean hack comedians. Now we're gonna have some fun, you know? Rudy's a good guy, he's a very good guy. Uh, he's a family man, loves his kids, right, Rudy? Love him? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, that's the answer I was looking for. No, he's a family, he's always talking about his kids. In person, on Facebook, he loves his kids. And according to familywatchdog.com, he loves other kids too, so. <laughs> Be careful with that. But right now I wanna introduce you to our dais tonight. What a dais it is. This is, this is nice. No Way Josue is here, nice to see you. Apparently Rudy was like, you know what this dance needs? An old Navy model. Let's do this. <laughs> now, No Way Josue is part of the Why So Funny comedy group. Yeah. Yeah. A question nobody asked you, people. <laughs> Kat Rabarski's here. Hi, Kat. You look nice. Mm -hmm. Kat's a bit of a feminist. She, uh... She's very girl power. She likes to say that girls can be funny too. Girls can be funny too. And I agree, 110%. Girls can be funny too. Kat Rybarski, on the other hand, not so much. <laughs> Joe Larkin's here. How you doing, Joe? All right. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> All right, what do you got to say, fatty? <laughs> no, I love Joe. Joe, we're going to get you up kind of early in the show in case you die in the middle of the fucking thing. <laughs> Gotcha, so don't worry about that. Patrick Newsom's here. I had to look at my notes because I don't give a shit about you. I know nothing about him. I know he's like, he calls himself an actor, which is a strange way of saying the word faggot. Kristen Toomey's in the house. Kristen Toomey! On this moment, Kristen, I've always wanted to fuck you. True. I feel this is the forum for that. <laughs> always wanted to fuck you, Kristen. But in these lights, I've changed my mind. <laughs> Never mind. David Franks is here. Wave to the people, David. Yeah. That's the creepiest fucking wave you'll ever see. I assume he's on the dais because he threatened to skin you and make a yeah. jacket out of your skin. Something like that, yeah. Robin Roy, how are you, Robin? Wave to the people. Yeah. Oh, she's so cool. Robin is actually a, a bodybuilder, which is impressive. Uh, the one good thing her body is good at building is kids. <laughs> a lot of kids. It's a vagina, not a clown car, Robin. Easy. Easy. Xavier Lamont's here. Everybody was like, where are your keys? He's a black. Xavier's dressed sharp, he always dresses nice. You can dress as nice as you want. I'm always going to assume you're gonna take my wallet. <laughs> Just always am. 
You know, XL is a very talented and accomplished stand-up comedian, and I know this because he tells me that every fucking time I see him. <laughs> You've done a couple shows at the Comedy Store, XL. We get it. You're here on a Tuesday night. You're not shit like the rest of us. <laughs> Salty Peters. Oh yeah, they, yeah this one. This, this is just for them. Salty always talks about bringing the ruckus. Always Facebook, I'm gonna bring the ruckus to the comedy shrine. How about you bring some fucking jokes, Salty? How about that? They're like, that's kind of mean, actually. But this is our dance, you guys. We're gonna have fun. We're gonna bust each other's balls and the birthday boy himself. We're gonna bring up our first roaster right now, a man with uh, the worst stage name I've ever had to say. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, No Way Josue! Yeah. Give it up for your host, Tales of Wino! Rudy, Rudy, Rudy. <laughs> Actually, I love Rudy. He's one of the few comics here that uh, he really appreciates uh, other comics and he takes comedy very seriously. Um, he's the most serious open mic comic I have seen. <laughs> Rudy, you have the fashion sense of a 1940s bootlegger. I have to give you that. <laughs> the first time I saw you, Rudy, though, I couldn't figure out what the fuck you were. I didn't know if you were a Koopa Troopa. <laughs> The Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. But then I saw your eyebrows. Then I realized you were Mexican. <laughs> Doesn't uh, Rudy look like Danny DeVito from Taxi after like 10 rounds of chemotherapy? <laughs> he kind of looks like uh, La Mosca CC. I don't know if any of you guys know who he is. <laughs> Salty does, because he's Mexican. There you go. That's good, I like that, that's good, I like yeah, that. Let's, let's give it up for Dale Zawada, though, the host. Yeah. Woo! His personal hygiene worries me a little bit, though. I don't know, uh, I, I, I love you guys, like you and Chris Ion, but I can never tell you guys apart. I can never tell if you're John Ritter or, or the guy from... Uh, I don't even know what movie yeah. I was in. Yeah, fuck yeah. I can never tell. Here you go. I'll sign it like John Goodman. Fuck that. Hey, sad. Hey, sad clown is a great name though. I have to give him that. But I think he should be more realistic. I think it should be sad, overweight comics with eating disorders and asthma. <laughs> give it up for Salty Peters. Yeah. He always brings the ruckus. I have to give him that. The most ruckus Salty Peters has ever brought, though, is laughing at another funnier comedian's <laughs> joke. You sound like a fucking billy goat, dude. He looks like the, the, the guy from Hercules, the goat man. <laughs> little pig, little pig, let me in. Salty, you're nothing but little. Sounds like when he laughs, like a chimpanzee is getting murdered. He almost looks like a Mexican Napoleon Dynamite when he had his hair out. Or an Asian Sideshow Bob with Down Syndrome. When Salty laughs, an angel gets its wings. Chopped off, set on fire, and shit on. Rev and Roy. I don't know you, but I have to acknowledge you here. This girl has more, this girl has more testosterone than Patrick Newsom has swallowed down his throat. Let's give it up for everyone. Patrick Newsom, my buddy. Disgruntled grandma. It's more like disgruntled comedy shrine employees. He's like a gay version of Sloth from the Goonies. Hi, you guys. I found this picture of uh, actually Patrick and Bear when they were little kids. Um, it was really interesting. 
I found it on his Facebook. Excel, <laughs> my dude. Yeah, he actually told me that he converted from uh, Muslim to Jewish. And uh, I found out why. He actually converted on Ramadan when they had a sale at Kmart. And he couldn't pass it up. They had a sale on extra small suits. Let's give it up for XL. XL, I've seen you with that same suit. You flood more than New Orleans. Please stop wearing white socks with your suits. He looks like Bowser after Mario hits him with a fireball. I don't know, doesn't he kind of look like Uncle Phil from the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air a little bit? Kind of like the gay love child of, uh, of the Miller High Life guy, Mr. Cooper. Just a little bit. David Franks. Where is he at? There you are. He kind of looks like a Roswell alien after the dissection. <laughs> Typically, I'm against abortion. <laughs> but in his case, I could have understand what they, his parents were thinking about. This coat hanger just isn't sharp enough. <laughs> this blowtorch is not hot enough. <laughs> Kat Rabarski. I didn't know who the fuck she was, so I had to go to her, actually her website. And I have to give it up for her. She is like the woman comic, I swear to God. She is like the modern day Susan B. Anthony of comedians. She was the first female comic to headline comedy under the tap. <laughs> No one else? No? <laughs> Joe Larkin. Joe, Joe, Joe. He looks like one of these guys that likes to have little kids mow their, his lawn with their shirts off. <laughs> and have them shower in the locker room with no clothes. Joe, you sure your last name isn't Paterno? I can finally, I finally figured out why Dale, Excel, and Patrick are always hanging out with you. They're waiting to die to eat your corpse. I actually used age progression software. I don't know if you guys have used this on your computer. And uh, it, it age progressed Joe from three months from now. Here's his picture now. Okay, this is three months from now. There you go, Joe, thanks a lot. Kristen Toomey, she's like the head of Boxcar. I've got to ask, which comedian up here hasn't seen Kristen's box? <laughs> oh wait, Patrick Newsom. <laughs> Kristen, way to rise above the stereotype that Irish women are drunks and whores. <laughs> Hey, this is all about Rudy, though, so let's give Rudy one last round of applause, if you will. Yeah. He is so innocent as a comedian. He reminds me of, like, a Make-A-Wish Foundation kid <laughs> whose only wish was to tell a funny joke. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Rudy is still alive. <laughs> that is why Rudy will never, never fucking die. <laughs> no, real talk though, no, Rudy. Dude, we love you. Why So Funny loves you. I'm sure all these comedians here love you. Rudy is truly a true supporter of comedy. Give him a round of applause. Let's give it back up to your host, Dale Zawada. Doesn't Dale kind of look like a woman though? Like a man? No, no, no. Like a woman that tries to dress like a man, like a... Like, kind of like Chaz Bono. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, Carrot Top. 
Oh, he's got another prop. Good for him. Good for him. No way, Jose. That's a stu- Your name's Josh. It's a perfect name. Use that. No way, Jose. Th- Rudy, this is the day you come up with and you've been doing comedy three weeks. Come on. Oh. Our next roaster's voice will make your ears bleed. Ladies and gentlemen, Kat Rabarsky! When Rudy asked me to do this roast, uh, I really didn't want to do it. But I couldn't turn it down since Rudy already gets rejected by so much with women on a daily basis. <laughs> Honestly though, Rudy's one of the, the nicest comics I know. Actually, I'm not sure that that's fair to say. It takes a lot to be a comic, so. <laughs> really though, this is great. I honestly can't think of a single place I'd rather be. Unless of course you count the bar, work, the DMV, my parents' basement, my grandma's funeral, public restroom, traffic, traffic court, or a disgruntled grandma show starring, <laughs> starring No Way Josue, David Franks, and Salty Peters. Half the reason I drink as much as I do is because I have to be in a million damn shows with these no-talent fucks. But, <sighs> but other than that, I'm happy to be here. Tonight we have a great roast master. They were, they were actually gonna lower the minimum age for the show until they remembered Dale Zawada would be here with his full-blown pedophile beard. <laughs> Honestly though, Dale masturbates so much that his dick had to file a restraining order. <laughs> we have the great Xavier Lamont here. Uh, Excel is like break from coffee. It's black, bitter, and cheap as fuck. <laughs> Definitely not the taster's choice. <laughs> a lot of people actually don't know how old Excel is. Uh, I just realized that next year his age and his credit score will be the same. <laughs> <laughs> he always keeps his bases covered though. That's why he always replies yes to Facebook events he'll never attend, so he'll always have an alibi. <laughs> Patrick Newson, fuck that guy. <laughs> now, growing up, uh, Patrick actually looked like Macaulay Culkin, but he's since found his own fame. You were really great in Paul Blart Mall Cops. I really enjoyed that. Patrick actually runs a production company called Disgruntled Grandma. Uh, no one actually knows who the company was named after because after the first show, she straight up killed herself. <laughs> And just when you thought John Griffin was the creepiest comic in Chicago, David Franks is here. <laughs> Little known fact about David, one of his ancestors actually invented hot dogs. His last name actually used to be Wieners, but his grandfather changed it to Franks so his grandchildren wouldn't grow up to be perverts. Sorry to hear that didn't work out. <laughs> Joe Larkin is here. What a great guy, honestly. A perfect example that chivalry is not dead, but it's getting pretty damn close. <laughs> He's quite the entertainer, too. Uh, I once saw him dance uh, Bust a Move to a Paula Abdul song, and I can honestly say it's the first time I've ever laughed at Joe Larkin. <laughs> female bodybuilding nerd genius feminine tomboy gone comic. Like no one's ever done that before. Like just be original for Jesus Christ's sake. Honestly. Kristen Toomey is here tonight. Kristen, you have what so many funny successful women don't have. A husband and kids to hold you back. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's Boxcar. I always get those two shitty dive bar showcases mixed up. <laughs> boxcar actually just found its new home here at the Comedy Shrine. 
You've now given three people something to look forward to. <laughs> no way, Josue is uh, part of the why so funny. He's the why part. <laughs> He's now doing comedy that the, now that the about money has run out. <laughs> It's still a work in progress, though. I'm not saying Josue's jokes are hacky, but once he sent a demo reel to Carlos Mencia, and he was like, not cool, man. <laughs> Salty Peters once introduced himself to me after I had known him for several years. <laughs> people forgetting who he is. <laughs> Salty always surprises me, though. He's, he's already accomplished a feat so many would have thought to be impossible. Marriage. <laughs> Speaking of which, yesterday, Rudy's Facebook relationship status changed to engaged. No. Of course I was happy because I'm single, and if Rudy can do it, anyone can. <laughs> It later came to light that that change was just a joke, which of course makes more sense. I'm not saying no one would marry Rudy, it would just be hard for them to confirm it on Facebook because goats can't use computers. Rudy was actually dropped off by his sister tonight. Just goes to show the type of family bond you have that she would be willing to make it look like you could actually show up with a girl. I do feel a little bad for how much I've been bashing on Rudy's appearance and lack of relationship success, but you leave me with no choice when you have no discernible body of work or comedic achievements to speak of. <laughs> <laughs> but you're still a great guy, Rudy, even though you'll probably never become famous. I love you anyway. Happy birthday. May you have many more years of insults to come. <laughs> Kat Grabarski, you guys. Nobody, and I mean nobody, reads from a paper better than Kat <laughs> Our next uh, roaster always talks about dying on stage. Fingers crossed. Ladies and gentlemen, Joe Larkin! Hey, let's hear it for Dale, huh? He said tonight, he posted something, he said he, he's afraid he might lose some friends tonight doing this. That assumes that you have some friends, Dan. Ah, <laughs> uh, let's see, no way, host way. I have no idea. I didn't prepare anything, I'm just running this He uh, looks like a Viking. <laughs> and the no way, host way. The why so funny thing, we're still trying to figure that one out. <laughs> Cat Rybarski. Cat, you know, that's another word for pussy. Right? <laughs> if you stroke her, she'll purr. That's why she's sitting next to me. If you see a big smile on her face later on, don't know. Uh, Patrick, Patrick Newson. I, uh, he's supposed to be the manager of this place, but I've never seen him fucking do anything. He just wanders around. Uh, 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 one day I saw him do something. He was scraping a, a picture off the side of that bar that they used at the bar show. It took him a half hour to get one fucking picture off. You know? He's not very swift. Then there's Kristen Toomey, boxcar comedy. Boxcar was named after her. Boxcar. <laughs> her box resembles a car. <laughs> a 1958 Buick. <laughs> and I'm the only one who knows what one of those looks like. Everybody else knows what her box looks like. <laughs> David Franks. I don't know, I didn't recognize you without a dick up your ass. <laughs> I 
I'm sorry, David. <laughs> 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 <Classic. laughs> and then there's Reb and Roy. Wow, <laughs> that's all I have to say. She uh, is a very smart lady. She could probably just write a formula that would send us all into another dimension, you know, like the funny zone. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's XL, the only black Jew, Jew who is allowed to do a roast since Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> Here's my impression of... <laughs> my impression of, of uh, the fuck is his name? John, John Griffin. <laughs> John Griffin, doing a Sammy Davis joke about, about XL. Uh, hey man, I can't think of anything funny, man. Can you dig it? And then there's Salty Peters. Salty came to my rescue a little while ago. I lost my car in Chicago. <laughs> really, I did. And uh, he and Charlie Stone drove me around trying to find my car, right? Charlie's car was full of like Taco Bell bags and wrappers. And he threw them all in a back seat. Salty had to squeeze in there. And we looked back there and he was licking the wrappers. <laughs> Loves him some Taco Bell. And then there's Rudy. Rudy, the first time I ever saw you, I thought you were the Pillsbury Doughboy that somebody took out of the oven too soon. He was in there long enough to get his eyebrows singed off and all his hair. <laughs> they plopped a hat on his head. <laughs> if they had left you on there a little bit longer, you would have been looking like a Puerto Rican, but I don't know what the fuck, <laughs> I don't know what you are. I got, you know, he posts so much shit, man. <laughs> He's got so many posts on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, I bought some of them with me. <laughs> Here. Here's the romantic, the romantic reading. He's like a fucking multiple personality guy. My Halloween costume consists of me wearing only one item. It's depressing, scary, and frightens me to think about it. I'll be wearing my old wedding ring. If it seems too good to be true, well, you know. <laughs> He's been to court multiple times about this, I don't know. <laughs> Here's another one. You ever make plans and you know the other person doesn't have the intention of showing up? <laughs> I don't for this question, huh? <laughs> Here's another romantic one. Had lunch today with a very pretty and great, pretty and great friend. She told me she sees a big positive change in my personality. <laughs> As opposed to the way I was a few years ago. Man, I'd like to see that. <laughs> I don't know, this is all crazy shit. Uh, he t yeah, I'd like to tell one of, one of Rudy's jokes. But I only have six minutes and the setup takes that long. <laughs> Rudy, every time he's on stage, he looks like he's gonna shit a brick. <laughs> That's why he's in a construction business, right? <laughs> He's built a house out of that stuff. Let's see. God. Rudy, I know I had some other jokes about you. Oh, he does a joke about a, about a funeral parlor that has a, has a bouncer, and they pose the people, the dead people, in a position, you know, something that they love doing. He's got this guy in a crotch rocket, you know? and then he's got another guy standing up against the wall with shades on him. They're gonna, they're gonna do Rudy in his, he's gonna be posed in his white van, right? 
with a bag of candy next to him. <laughs> His dick out. <laughs> and he's going to be towing. He's going to be, he's going to be towing like six police cruisers behind him. <laughs> he's always being followed around. We're going to save gas, you know. <laughs> Let's put him up on the box. I gave my key to your cousin when I came in here, the valet Parker. <laughs> There's no valet parking here. <laughs> oh shit, man. My car is going to be up on blocks when I get out of here. <laughs> Rudy, I love you. You're a great guy. Happy birthday. And that's all I got, folks. Yeah. Oh, here's that fucking daily thing. Keep it going for Joe Larkin, you guys. Look at him. Did nobody tell you there was a roast today? He was like, right material, Matt locks on, fuck it. I made you Jewish for some reason, I don't know what that was. <laughs> Our next roaster is here for a very important reason, uh, because he works here. And someone had to open the fucking doors. Ladies and gentlemen, Patrick Newson. Your shit? What are you new or something? Uh, <laughs> oh my god, look at you people. I haven't been on a lineup this bad since the last time I was up with peanuts. Um, <laughs> uh, Dale, you're doing a good job, man. You're doing a good job. I'm glad to see you here without Chris Iron's feet hanging out the back of your ass. <laughs> um, Cage match, right? Cage match. Um, ser seriously, though, I'm surprised you can make it, though, with your uh, your busy screenwriting schedule. He wrote a screenplay. Did anyone hear about it? Has he ever told anyone? Anyone? No one, no one knew about it? I, I just learned the other day. I'm so fucking surprised. Um, it's called Worth the Wait. It's a romantic comedy about a, an overweight guy who finds love. Now, Dale believes that you should write what you know. Apparently... Dale knows really shitty film concepts, you know? Um, <laughs> Salty Peters, one of my favorite comics, Salty Peters is here. Uh, no one claps anymore. That's a, that's a, they didn't clap the first time either. Um, well, I was gonna do the like, bring the ruckus thing, but everyone's fucking done that. What the fuck is, you don't say it. If you said it, like, you could be like, shoes is crazy, man, and that would be a new, a new tagline for you, but you don't see it in your act. The one thing I do, uh, I do always love about your act is that he ends it with a song. You know, it's that five minute song he does when he gets like the one minute light, you know? <laughs> and it's all about how his wife doesn't, doesn't suck his dick anymore. And I see Mrs. Salt's here. It's good to see her. I, mean, I asked her once, I asked her. I was just like, you know, he's a, he's a good guy. He provides for his family, he's, you know? It's just, what, what's the problem? And she said, you know what, Patrick? She goes, I, I don't blow on talented people. <laughs> oh, man. Kat Rabarski's here. I love Kat. Kat. Uh, she's the girl that you normally see walking around with that really big book of jokes, but she only tells five. <laughs> you know? uh, who else? Who else we got? Uh, Kristen Toomey, who I love. Kristen Toomey, uh, like we talked about. She's actually producing these boxcar shows with... You're right. With uh, with Matt Drufke, and they have a couple things in common. They both like to get really drunk and take their clothes off, and they they both have shows that are very very just just not good. I mean, they're just not they're not received at all. David Franks, love David Franks. David Franks is here. Uh, David, for those who don't know David, uh, he's the guy that's usually staring longingly at Kevin Lobkovich. I don't know if you. I don't know. I don't know if you've ever, ever seen this. Do do women like pull their children closer to them in the grocery store when you walk by? A little bit. I always thought a great job for him if he'd be like, "I will teach your children about stranger danger," and then he'll just, like, offer them to like go like offer them candy and see what happens. XL was here. It was just so weird because he said he would be. You know. Um, uh, He's dressed, 
he's dressed always in a suit, which is, you know, good because a lot of people ask him, they always say, why are you always in a suit? He's like, I want to look nice, or this is how people remember me. I just think he's always ready for court. <laughs> you know? um, seriously, though, I mean, honestly, if, if, if he had any less of a moral compass, he'd work for Penn State. I, mean, I don't know, I don't know. Um, I'm going to call Charlie Stone and tell him that one didn't work very well. Uh, oh, Joe Larkin. Joe Larkin's here. Joe Larkin's old. I didn't know how many people were going to say it because I didn't know because Dale was too fucking lazy to do a, uh, a lineup earlier on. Um, I'm sure he's... Dale, Dale spent... Er, no, not Dale. Uh, Joe spends a lot of time uh, at the, writing jokes that aren't funny, but he also spends most of his time at doctor's offices because he's, you know... 92, and it's, seriously, he's had more fingers up his ass than David Franks. Um, <laughs> Josh Inglis, otherwise known as Leroy Hicks's prison bitch. <laughs> seriously, though, I mean, you're throwing a lot of gay jokes, but just because you're in prison, it's still gay. It's still gay. Watch any, watch any Why So Funny, Why So Funny video. He's always, always gay. Um, he refers to himself as a uh, did someone said it? No way, ho, no, no way. I'm gonna find any of your shit funny. Um, uh, let's see. He's part of comedy group. Why so funny? It's the one with 15 people. They have 15 people producing. Yet Kimberly Marion does all the fucking work. I don't know if anyone's ever noticed it. Um, you know, I've always, I've always introduced him as the guy. He's the guy who looks like the guy from Die Hard. And I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I apologize. Because you're nothing like that guy. That guy is talented. Um, <laughs> Revin, Revin, there's really nothing. You're such a nice person. I, I, I want to bang you. There. There we go. Let's just throw that one out. Mona is not here, although I want to do her joke, because uh, everybody was like, I, I don't know her, and I kept asking her question, questions about her. I said, who, you know, who is she? And everyone was like, oh my god, she's so hot. Oh my god, she's beautiful. Nobody ever said funny. <laughs> not one person ever said funny. Uh, Rudy, I'm coming to you, Rudy. I didn't miss anybody, did I? No. Um, happy birthday, Rudy. You know, I'm sure every, every yeah, thanks, Chris, Chris and Jimmy. Fuck you, people. They were so cheated with all the hate. I just said something nice about somebody, and they're like, yeah, not fucking into it. Um, every year for Rudy is a surprise because, and, and, and you know, he's from East Aurora, and not because. It's dangerous it's because the school systems are so bad, he can only count to 30. <laughs> um, I was gonna bring some of your, I was gonna bring some of your, your Facebook statuses, but I just figured it's just easier for me to be like, fuck you, bitch, I hope you die, and then save some time on the stage. Um, what else? Did, uh, he's come a long way as a comedian, you know, I think he's funnier as a, as an ex-husband, he's less likely to chop his ex-wife up and put her in the car. Uh, he's a good dad, although he, does spend, he spends too much time with strippers, if you ask me. A little too much time with the strippers. You need to spend some more time with your daughter so she doesn't become a stripper. <laughs> it's just a friendly word of... Uh... And you gotta, you, gotta, you gotta cool it on your Facebook status. Anything... Anything ever happens to your ex-wife, it's gonna be like exhibit A, you know? <laughs> take a take a trip, take a take a take, take, take an idea from, from Casey Anthony. Don't do it, don't do it. Although if I were to compare your parenting skills, I would compare it to Casey Anthony. <laughs> Rudy is one of those comics, he's one of those comics, he comes out to the shows um, when he's not booked. He comes out to the shows to see. What was you laughing at that for? He comes, I'm just saying this is the nice part shit. He comes out to, to support the shows and he comes out to support the comics. Always has nice things to say about, about the act, mainly because he's waiting for you to say something nice about his. But at the very least, he's a very supportive individual and that is why we like Rudy. And also because he looks like he stepped out of an Al Capone film. But other than that, he's a very nice guy and we love him and that's why we're here roasting you, Rudy. We love you. Thanks, man. One more time for Patrick Newson, you guys.
Is anybody else pissed they didn't get a Rudy hug and just this guy? Yeah. Everyone was like, oh. Yeah, no, you don't even no, but I do want to thank Patrick and the Comedy Shrine for hosting this tonight. Big round of applause for the Comedy Shrine. It is a very lovely establishment. Let's enjoy it because in six months it will be a Chuck E. Cheese. Enjoy the time. Our next roaster is very special, you guys. It's Rudy Ruiz's grandmother, Kristen Toomey. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Good? Yeah. I, uh, I don't have notes like everybody else. That's cute. I, um, I'm very happy to be here. I haven't fake laughed this hard since the last time I saw Who's Line show here. <laughs> I, uh, I'm adding extra laugh lines. Not fun. I uh, ho give it up for No Way Host Way, everybody. He's kind of cute. He kind of looks like Kurt Cobain does right now. A little bit. Um, I also drink a lot because I have to hang out with these untalented pricks, uh, which is, I think, what Kat was trying to say. I think that was her joke. One. Um, we got Joe Larkin <clears throat> holding some, I don't know what that is, pork grinds, and, um, which is funny because he can't chew. Um, you got Patrick Newson here, GM of this place, clap for him. Um, I thought it was so funny that he, he was talking about, like, a, he wanted to fuck that girl, which, I mean, come on. <laughs> He lives with a butch man he nicknamed Bear. Okay, his roommate, Bear. All right, I don't think so. Rebin, I don't know you, I think you're safe enough. I will say when you walked in, uh, you kind of matched Rudy, I thought you were his escort for the evening. Like, oh shit, he, he done doled it out. Happy birthday. Motherfucking baller over here, spending the big bucks. She's gonna kick my ass now. That's cute. I um, you got Dale. Give it up for Dale, your uh, roast master. He's in the movie industry. He uh, had a film or something. Um, Dale, sorry to break this to you, but the the fucking nineteen year old that stuffs the red box is more in the movie industry than you are. <laughs> Uh, but that's cute that you think so. David Franks, everybody. Um, I have children, so I'm just going to say David Franks, everybody. Uh, I already got to you. And then XL, this motherfucker right here. He comes in late. Black people time. I'll say it. He brings his own fucking drink. He brought his own fucking drink. The black Jew brings his own drink. What, you leave your dignity in the fucking car? He brings his own drink. XL, he looks scary, right? But then when he opens his mouth, he sounds like Sherman from Nutty Professor. Sherman, sure like I was scared of you, now I just know you're hungry. You're not mean. And then you got Salty Peters, okay? Salty Peters. The, the last thing that was as funny as Salty Peters to come out of Mexico was fucking swine flu. <laughs> and then you bring us to Rudy, who I don't fucking know. So all I can say is, um, you dress like you have money, but I bet you don't. You live in where, Plano? Yeah. This is big time for him, you guys. This is a fucking city right here for him. Um, I would have dressed better because um, obviously you thought people were coming. So um, anyway, I know, but I do want to say Rudy is a very sweet guy. He's very supportive, like Patrick was saying about other people's shows and stuff because he's an ass kisser. Um, and, uh, but he's very supportive. He's always going out to shows. He's a great host if you ever want to book him. 
Um, and thank you for having me on this show, and um, have a good night, everybody. Thanks a lot. One more time for Kristen Toomey, you guys. <laughs> I know. I know. That's what I I just do a joke about how the shrine's not doing that great financially, and you brought in your own fucking drink? <laughs> Get him, Dave. Get him. All right, your next roaster, uh, this is going to be an experience. If you've ever wanted to see a serial killer do stand-up, you are in for a treat. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, David Franks. whose name slipped my mind. Rudy, I'll be honest, I never liked you. Rudy, I got just one piece of advice for you in show business. Quit. But no, in, in seriousness, Rudy, the first time I saw you perform on stage, you dazzled me. But then I realized it was just the light bouncing off the top of your head. <laughs> yeah, you wear the hat all the time, Rudy. That's a good idea. Yeah, it's a good idea. Because, you know, we don't want to see what's underneath there. <laughs> we don't. We don't want to see that. But that, that's a good idea. Because, in fact, it'd be kind of good if you could wear the hat so it covers a little bit more. Because, you know, let's be honest. When it comes to looks, you're no Brad Pitt. You're not. You kind of look like curly fucked Elmer Fudd and put a tie on. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm being honest with you, Rudy, because, you know, that's what we're here for. Do you know, I'll tell you, the, the, the looks, that's the least of your problems. Because, you know, let's be honest, Rudy, you're not exactly the sharpest knife in the cutlery set, are you? You're not exactly the swiftest hamster in the exercise wheel, are you? You're kind of a big dummy. You know, you're a nice guy, but you're a big dummy. You're so dumb, you thought this was a good idea. <laughs> Jesus what were you thinking, Rudy? What were you thinking? Couldn't you just stayed home and gotten drunk and fur loco and jacked off to tranny porn like you do every other year? <laughs> Did you have to involve all of us in this? You know, Rudy, you're so dumb, you watch Jersey Shores and you feel intimidated by Snooky's intellect. <laughs> You're so dumb, you hired Jerry Sandusky to entertain at your kid's birthday party. <laughs> what were you thinking? What were you thinking? Yeah, and there's so many things, Rudy, that you don't understand. You don't understand, like, how come sometimes it's light outside and sometimes it's dark? <laughs> how come sometimes buildings get in my way when I'm walking? <laughs> but I'm just kidding, Rudy, you know. I gotta say, you have always been an inspiration to me on comedy. You have been. Because I figure if you can make it, anybody can. Even Patrick Newsom. <laughs> and I, I, I'm sure I speak for everyone here tonight when I say thank you, Rudy, for lowering the bar for the rest of us. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, Rudy. You know, you're, you're a great guy. You're a funny guy. You're a good sport. And you got balls bigger than Kristen for doing this. <laughs> Let's give it up for Rudy. Let's give it up for Rudy. And Rudy, you know, I think it's really great that you, you invited so many funny and talented people to be here tonight. It's just too bad that none of them could make it. <laughs> oh my God, oh my God, look at this. I can't believe it. Yeah, welcome to Rudy's life on the Z list. <laughs> I haven't seen this many losers in one place since the last Republican debate. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Yeah, I don't even know where to begin. I wanna, who do we got? Oh, I see we got, uh, we got Joe Larkin here. I see you left, I see you left your Dell Web community to join us. <laughs> Can I get you another vodka and embalming fluid, Joe? <laughs> don't worry, Joe. Don't worry. I'm not gonna tell a lot of stupid, unfunny jokes about how old you are. 
I'll let you keep doing that. I don't want to steal your act. Before I came here, Joe, I, I promised myself I wouldn't tell any you're so old jokes, but what the hell, I'm gonna break my promise. Joe, you're so fucking old, you got a time short forest lawn, don't you? <laughs> you're so old, when you speak in body language, it's Latin. <laughs> you're so old, when you remember 9-11, it's the year. You're so old, when Adam and Eve got kicked out of the Garden of Eden, they came and stayed with you for a while. <laughs> you didn't have to respond, Joe. I know you're probably a little tongue-tied, but with rigor mortis setting in and everything. No, I'm just kidding, Joe. You know, I'm crazy about you. I am. And you want to know why? I'll tell you the truth. This is the honest truth. When I go to a comedy show and you're there, I think to myself, thank God I'm not the oldest motherfucker here tonight. <laughs> thank you, Joe. Oh, and Kristen Toomey's here tonight. Kristen, yeah, hi. You know, I gotta say, you're a dear, sweet, lovely gal, but you got a mouth on you like a drunken truck driver at a cockfight, don't you? <laughs> I'm just saying. And Salty Peters is here. How you doing over there, Salty? Good. Yeah, good. I just got one question I've always been dying to ask you. What the hell kind of a name is Salty Peters, anyway? <laughs> Sounds like an appetizer you'd serve at a gay bathhouse. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Let's see who else we got here. Oh, we got my good friend Xavier Lamont. The appropriately named XL. Or maybe that should be XXXXL. <laughs> Xavier, I heard you lost some weight. But I can see you found it again. Didn't you? <laughs> yeah, it was right there inside that Dunkin' Donuts box, wasn't it? <laughs> good. Yeah, but you know what? Seriously, you're, you're a large man, so you can carry your weight back and forth to Taco Bell 15 times a day. I hear that Popeyes created a VIP room for you, didn't they? Sure. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. I heard you're the only person I know whose refrigerator took out a restraining order against him. That's gotta hurt. But no, but seriously, I think you look, you look great tonight, you do. You look relatively thin and trim, and, and who wouldn't with Patrick Newsom here? <laughs> Patrick. <laughs> Job of the Hutt would look thin next to Patrick, wouldn't he? Right up until Patrick ate him. <laughs> I think that's funny, huh? Yeah, Patrick, tell the truth. When you found out that whales were an endangered species, you took out a life insurance policy, didn't you? <laughs> Last time Patrick went to McDonald's, they changed the sign from over six billion served to we give up. <laughs> the other night Patrick was making love to a beautiful woman. She said, eat me, big boy. He put ketchup on her. <laughs> I said up here. No way, cat and ribbon. I don't know much to say to you except uh, I'm sorry that you guys couldn't have gotten out of this either. <laughs> and that's all I got to say except once again, hey, happy birthday, Freddie. Oh. One more time for David Franks, you guys. Our next roaster goes to show that even if you are a married woman, Rudy will invite you to the dais in the slight hopes of still fucking you. <laughs> Robin Roy, ladies and gentlemen. What the hell am I doing up here? <laughs> my top would fall down as a distraction more than I do right now. <laughs> so anyways, I grabbed my 
rubber chicken up here tonight so y'all would know I'm here to do comedy, not to strip. <laughs> but I was a little nervous when I was told that I need to do six to seven minutes because I'm pretty new at comedy until I saw all the guys up here and I figured, yeah, they all probably have a hard time going six to seven minutes. <laughs> Maybe Joe, because Joe takes Viagra. <laughs> Gotta love that, right? I love you, Joe. Um, and there's something really sexy about you, Joe. I can't quite figure out what it is. I can't quite put my finger on it. It's on the tip of my tongue. I just know it. <laughs> 69, Joe? You're, you're 69, right? Yeah. God, you make 69 look good. I hope I look as great at 69. <laughs> Patrick. I love Patrick too because Patrick's cool because he doesn't mind me stalking him. Now I'm not talking about Facebook stalking, although I've done that too. I mean he's okay with me showing up outside his house any time of the day and sometimes he even surprises me with popcorn and a striptease. If you're interested in joining me on stalking him, Thursday nights are bubble bath night. Right, Salty? <laughs> now. Don't act like you haven't had any of that popcorn. <laughs> Alright, well, truthfully, I've only met Salty once, but I never forgot it because his name's fucking Salty. That's not a common name like Lemon Pepper. Um, <laughs> I've never met XL, so to help me remember who you are, I'm going to start calling you Mesquite Seasoning Blend. <laughs> I'm really glad to see you up here tonight. I'm always glad to see another pussy on stage. And with a name like Cat, can't forget that, right? <laughs> and um, I I've actually only met Dale once, and he probably doesn't remember the first time I met him was the first time I was up on stage at the Shrine, and that performance went about as well as this is right now. <laughs> no way, Kristen, Brian, I'm sorry, David. <laughs> Time to write anything about you guys because I was too busy. Okay, <laughs> I was too busy. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have time. I was too busy stalking Patrick. Um, but of course, we're all here for Rudy tonight. Let's hear some applause for Rudy. Give it up for Rudy. I'll be honest, I just did that so I could hear some applause while I was up on stage. <laughs> Let's hear some laughter for Rudy. Um, <laughs> No? You guys are on to me now? Should I just start stripping? <laughs> Rudy, you'd love that, right? Only you don't need me to strip to know what I look like naked. That's because Rudy undresses everyone with his eyes. You know what I'm talking about, right, Patrick? <laughs> and you too, Mesquite Seasoning Blend. <laughs> he is so good at it. That if he doesn't do it when he sees you, you have to wonder, do I not look cute today? Should I have worn my hair down? But at least it's okay that I didn't have my bikini wax. <laughs> now, Rudy, today is my son's birthday, too. So for me, your birthday will forever be synonymous with nausea, screaming profanities, and excruciating pain. <laughs> Much like now. <laughs> Um, I actually met Rudy in a stand-up class here at the Shrine, and he was so nice to me, even when he found out that I was married. <laughs> and that I had kids. And that I wasn't going to sleep with him. <laughs> he has a one-track mind, though. Remember that undressing thing I told you about? Well, we used to start off our class talking about what happened to us that day, looking for material. And one day, I was telling everybody how I peed myself in a Wendy's bathroom, when he stopped me to tell me how sexy my boots were. <laughs> Man, was I glad I'd gotten a bikini wax that day. <laughs> I was also really flattered that he remembered my name because I figured it was pretty unusual for him to remember a girl's name. You know what I'm talking about, pussy. I mean, cat. <laughs> By the way, Rudy, I have on your favorite scent, vomit and peanut butter. <laughs> I had to go to three truck stops to find it, though. 
<laughs> now, I have to tell you, Rudy, it really takes balls to get up and let people roast you. Trust me, I know about balls. I've been doing bodybuilding long enough that I've grown a pair. <laughs> it really confuses my waxer. And I love telling that joke because everybody automatically looks at my crotch. But come on, people, let's keep it classy tonight. Keep the focus up here where it belongs, okay? <laughs> You know what I'm talking about, right, Dale? <laughs> Rudy is a classy guy. I know this because he only gets his hookers from Naperville. <laughs> Although I have to tell you, Rudy, hookers don't like getting paid in weed and pork rinds. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right, Dale? <laughs> Again, he keeps it classy on stage, wearing shirts and ties. It really makes an impression, Rudy. So much so that I have to tell you that in class, the sexual tension, it really, it grew every week. There were days that it was almost palpable, and I know it was difficult to stay away from each other. So since it's your birthday, Rudy, I thought I would be bold and bring you a bikini picture so you wouldn't forget. Go ahead, take a look. Okay. <laughs> you know what? Dave Sinker has an amazing body. Maybe he'll sign it for you if you give him some pork rinds. Maybe he'll sign it for you if you give him some pork rinds. Happy birthday, Rudy. Oh, you guys, let her hear it. Let her hear it. No way you forgot your prop. Oh, wait, that's hers. That's her prop. Uh, we got two more left, Rudy. How you feeling? You feeling good? Good, yeah. You're getting pissed off, aren't you? Uh, He's going to lay the hammer in a couple. It's going to be crazy. All right, two more left. Our next roaster is black. That's the insult. Ladies and gentlemen, Xavier <laughs> How's everyone doing? I want to start this off just say uh, happy birthday to my man Rudy. Hope uh, hope it's a great day and all stuff. Sorry about this shit, but it's gonna get ugly. <laughs> all right. Well, first off, first off, I can't believe anybody has to acknowledge this shit. We have actual full-on celebrities in the building tonight, and I just I'm not gonna let this shit pass because I can't believe nobody else is. Out. I know like people mentioned Mr. Fucking Del Zwada is in the movie business. <laughs> Little movie called Worth the Way, and Pat kind of gave the story. He didn't give the whole fucking story. It's actually about a fat guy that uh, he falls in love, he's awkwardly, socially awkward, he falls in love, and he masturbates, masturbates to bestiality porn every day. And then he falls in love when he, falls, when he meets a donkey performer in Tijuana. The original title was How Rudy Met Dale. <laughs> and that shit's working out. We also have former child actor, Mr. Patrick Newsom. Everybody, he talks about his uh, acting. If you, hang out with, if you hang out with Patrick, he'll tell you, he was, I'm an actor. I performed for years. Actually, let me say it like he said, I'm an actor. I performed for years. <laughs> I, love, I don't mind, he's a friend. He's a, he's a friend. Me and him actually, we hang out. I don't mind like the stories. They're like, yeah, tell me, tell me your fucking days of glory, buddy. I don't mind. It's just like that, that lisp thing. I can like it, it. It bugs me because it sounds like he has a mouthful of cum, and I, I always wonder: is that an actual speech impediment or muscle memory from the night before? So, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna hurt, bitch. <laughs> it's gonna hurt, bitch. Uh, we also have. Uh, a, a really good buddy of mine. We've done uh, Salty, we've done what, like six shows in the last like six weeks or something like that, at least something close to that. We always showing up, always. I love Salty, he's a great guy, but I've been meaning to ask you this for the longest time. Salty Peters? Like, your name translates to unsanitary dick. <laughs> like, who the fuck gave you that? It was a David Franks or Patrick Newsom. <laughs> I'm like, like, salty. <laughs> um, and uh, I, I, you know, I'm 
bouncing all over the place because I, I didn't know how the dance was going to be set up. So uh, I want to say one of my favorite women in Chicago comedy uh, is in the building, Miss, Miss Kat Robowski. I love her. And she showed off her talent. She lit me up like a fucking Christmas tree. I, I, uh, I don't have much to say about her except for, uh, you know, I, you, I mean, I don't have anything to say about her. I just love her. I mean, come on. Uh, Chunky white chick that's insecure and has low self-esteem, that's right up my alley. I... <laughs> There's no way, no way I'm not loving that. Uh, I'm all over that right there. I swear to God. And, but I, and I'd feel the same way about Kristen Toomey if she got rid of the balls. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> uh, I, but by the way, uh, No Way Jose, I'm, I'm calling you Josh, motherfucking it? No fucking No Way Jose shit. It's my dude. He actually is one of the first people to put me in like a, a, a feature showcase. He was like one of the first people, uh, he came up to me, we met, worked doing a, a Burt Both show. And uh, I remember, I was like shocked because he just came out of nowhere and uh, he asked me to be part of the show and I was like, that is so nice of that young lady to put me on that show. And then I got there, like imagine my surprise. I was like, that's a dude? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> oh shit! Oh shit! I, you know what? I, I'm not even gonna. I, I was gonna. I was gonna beat up. I was gonna beat up on my people. But why so funny? Put me on shows when uh, nobody knew the fuck I was. So I love those guys, motherfuckers. Yeah, they're gonna put me on again. Uh, and I, well, by the way, another person who was actually at the same showcase who I've known since I started doing comedy, Mr. Joe Larkin. I gotta say this. I'm not gonna do a whole bunch of like, like ah, everybody's beating up the beating up old bit to death and shit. Like, I mean, the moment, he, he's gonna die soon enough, y'all. Leave that shit alone. But I do want to say he talks about fucking all the time. He like makes a joke about jacking off and going to his doctor. And I asked him one time because I was curious, man. I want to know, like, shit. Did you like Joe? Uh, you 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 beat off and. Just like, yo, can you actually still like ejaculate? Like, does that shit actually still happen? And he's like, eh, well, XL, it, uh, it actually comes out like powder. And I'm like, Joe, get the fuck out of here, man. Like, you gotta crack a joke about everything. I didn't believe him and shit. So one time we were doing a show together and I said, hey, you know, you wanna ride out together? I go to pick him up and I'm knocking on the door and I hear people rustling around in there. They're taking forever to get to the fucking door. And all of a sudden I hear, oh! And his wife answers the door, and it looks like she ate like a hundred fucking powdered donuts. I was like, oh shit, Joe wasn't lying. That shit is powder. Fuck y'all, that was funny to me. You know? <laughs> Thank you, boo-boo. There, there you go. Me and you, it's all about yeah, <laughs> uh, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I do want to, uh, Reverend Roy, uh, I, uh, I don't know her very well, I can't say a lot of stuff about her. I do, just from like a quick Google search, uh, know that uh, she's very intelligent, she's you know very athletic, she's a sweetheart, uh, and she's an awesome, awesome person. And I don't know the awesome, awesome person part from the Google search. I know it because I've been staring at her breasts for the last hour. <laughs> Anybody with titties like that cannot be bad. So, so <laughs> God bless those motherfuckers. I, I was hoping to God she was serious about propping them out. <laughs> Y'all to see my big ass dive over the table just to get a full frontal shot. Would have been amazing. Uh, and then, you know, last up, I would, last up, uh, I'm not gonna, Dan they, Frank, I admire him. Like, he does a style of comedy that uh, I, could, I could never do. And, uh, and I'm also very impressed that uh, it's a known fact, you can look it up on Wikipedia, he's actually seen more cock this year than all three Kardashian sisters combined. So, uh, <laughs> so between that and, uh, and his style, I'm not gonna really mess with him. I just wanna get to the birthday boy here before we get the fuck out of here. We, uh, I remember he came out to my show, and this is actually, I think it was before you had actually started kicking it up in, in comedy, and we met there, and, uh, he was there with his boys, and you guys all know how Rudy dresses. And I swear to God, I, I, I was, but the first thing I was thinking, the entire time I was on stage, I was like, I told my bookie tomorrow night, why the fuck did he send his guys? Because <laughs> 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 his boys were sitting up front, 
And those motherfuckers, I was killing that night, and those motherfuckers weren't laughing for the like first three minutes of my set. They just sitting there in a fucking zoot suit staring at me. <laughs> I was like, I told this motherfucker tomorrow night. I break my kneecaps after the set? That's a bitch. And I found out he was a comic, and I was like, you bite my style, motherfucker, with the suit. <laughs> no, but we, we connected right away. We connected right away because he's from the east side of Aurora. Uh, I'm from the west side. Uh, he's Hispanic. I'm black. And there's, there's a connection. There's a connection in the Aurora black and Hispanic community uh, that we have an understanding. An understanding is basically if you come from a neighborhood, I'll shoot you. <laughs> And we, uh, and we got that shit right away. Everybody's mad at me because I got here late. Motherfucker, I was making sure the coast was clear. <laughs> I, was gonna, I was making sure I was going to... This whole shit could have been a, like a long, to, a long con setup. I thought I was going to walk in this motherfucker and see 30 Life Kings like, we got you, bitch. <laughs> We've been waiting 20 years. We got your ass. <laughs> but uh, real talk, uh, every, what everybody said about my man, Rudy's 100% true. He's been, he's been at shows that nobody else. He, he, I was at a show at Crosstown. I did a show at Crosstown Pub. And literally, literally the only audience member was Rudy and the people he came with uh, in my headlining gig at fucking Crosstown Pub. So for that, that's my man. I'm here for him anytime he needs me. Happy birthday, my man. Keep it going for XL, you guys. He's black. Our last one before you, Rudy. It's going down. Our, our last roast before Rudy. Once again, uh, the second worst stage name I've ever had to say. Ladies and gentlemen, Salty Peters. All right, uh, let's start out with your roast master, Dale. Uh, Dale, as always, when you listen to his act, talks about how big of a movie buff he is. And uh, by big, I mean that he ate Ebert. <laughs> uh, Joe Larkin, it is true, we helped him find his car uh, in the city two weeks ago. Uh, we spent two hours looking for a car that was parked a block and a half away from the club. <laughs> Which is when I realized Joe is so old now, he will die at any moment. But I'm prepared for that after all the times I've seen him die on stage. <laughs> Kristen Toomey is here. Uh, Kristen was sober enough to drive in tonight, which is different from her usual mode of transportation, riding Matt Drunkie's coattails. <laughs> Drunkie's coattails are Jeff Hansen's cock. <laughs> David Franks, uh, when I heard little kids were getting molested at Penn State, I was like, what the fuck was David Franks doing at Penn State? Uh, let's see. Revan brought up her uh, fake chicken on stage to... Uh, match her fake tits for the same reason, to <laughs> distract from her face. <laughs> no way, host way. Who the fuck purposely gives themselves a Hispanic last name? We're all trying to get names like Steven and shit, and you do that on purpose. Between your blonde hair, your blue eyes, and your height, there is nothing Hispanic about you. You're about as Hispanic as Xavier Lamont is black. <laughs> Xavier does look scary. You see him the first time, you're like, damn, Black Shrek. <laughs> and then when he speaks, you realize he has less street cred. He can't even roll down Sesame Street. You're about as hood as Mr. Rogers. <laughs> Kat Rabarski is here, or as I used to refer to her, Patrick Newsom's beard. <laughs> Patrick Newsom has proved that uh, if you work hard enough, you treat people right, and you uh, blow Dave Sinker, you can be the general manager at Comedy Show. <laughs> Patrick Newsom was able to lose 50 pounds on a steady diet of Dave Sinker's cum, and he still looks like Ralphie Mae. <laughs> and then we have the birthday boy. Happy birthday, Rudy. I, uh, I met Rudy for the first time uh, several months ago in the spring at a comedy show, and unfortunately I haven't had the opportunity to work with him a lot because I'm not still doing only open mics. Damn. Shit. Rudy, you need to get really good at comedy soon or you're going to become a producer at the Comedy Shrine. 
And if you keep posting as often as you do on Facebook, you'll be hosting an open mic at Riddles on Monday nights. <laughs> I tried so hard writing roast jokes for Rudy, but he hasn't accomplished much. I thought there were other Rudys out there more deserving of a roast. To name a few, Rudy Valentino, Rudy Giuliani, Rudy Rudiger, Rudy Huxtable, and Rudolph the fucking Red-Nosed Reindeer. Two of those Rudys are fake, and they have a more accomplished body of work. Rudy, they, everyone's mentioned he is the, one of the best-dressed comedians uh, in Chicago. He's also one of the most well-groomed comedians. Look at his face. He's the only motherfucker I know that got a Brazilian wax on his face. You closely resemble an 11-year-old penis, and I know that because David Franks tried to fillet your cranium earlier tonight. <laughs> but in all seriousness, uh, I did meet Rudy a few months ago. He is one of the most stand-up guys that I've met in comedy. Uh, he has a lot of character. He's got so much character, he was able to assemble this day as some comedians here. Uh, I don't, that is a compliment, in spite of what it looks like. <laughs> But no, on stage, Rudy is, he's a natural on stage. Uh, he's endearing, he draws you into his stories. He's very authentic, which is something that's rare for comedians, no matter how long we've been doing it. And we're all excited to see what he's gonna do in comedy as soon as he knows how to tell a joke. <laughs> Happy birthday, Rudy, we all love you, thank you. Can you call for Salty Peters, you guys? This has been a fun night. Are you guys ready for the birthday boy? Yeah. Let me hear, are you ready for the birthday boy? Yeah. It's time he gets his revenge, ladies and gentlemen, Rudy Ruins. Thank you everybody for coming out. Uh, this is what happens when you scrape the bottom of the comedy barrel. Uh, we got everybody here. I'm glad everybody made it out. Um, the last two birthdays have sucked, and uh, so does this one. Um, <laughs> we have uh, Dale Zawada. Um, he runs that, uh, that, that, that showcase in Naperville, uh, Depressed Carney, or what is it? <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> sad Clown, something like that. There you go, yeah, yeah, Depressed Clown, something like that, some shit like that. Uh, Dale probably doesn't remember this, but uh, I actually liked his, his, uh, his comedy page uh, several months ago. And uh, Dale put up that he wanted some, uh, some people to call into his, uh, that, that pussy ass podcast that he has. <laughs> uh, where no one listens. And uh, I actually sent him an email uh, before I even got in comedy and everything. I'll just get into it. And Dale puts on there that uh, he wants uh, established comics. And uh, that's what he's looking for. So I don't know what the fuck he's doing on there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But I like Dale. I go out to the shows uh, Dale all the time, and uh, he's a good guy. I, you know, I really like him. Dale's always uh, he's joking about how uh, he doesn't get any action. He was always telling me to, to bring women out there. Always telling me to bring women. And uh, Dale does this joke where uh, he's always talking about you know that the most action he gets is when he goes to a uh, dental hygienist and she rubs up on his elbow. <laughs> I always want to take him to the strip bar, but I'm afraid he's gonna elbow all the bitches in there. <laughs> so. <laughs> But uh, no, Dale's probably the only joke, uh, the only, well, joke, yeah, he's a joke. <laughs> Dale's the only comic that can do jokes about Chuck E. Cheese and then all the parents will copy and paste his picture and send it out to the Chuck E. Cheeses to make sure this motherfucker doesn't get in. <laughs> uh, Reverend Roy. Reverend Sexy, that's the only reason I had her up here. <laughs> uh, yeah, everybody, everybody knows my taste in women. Uh, Reverend, I actually, she's right, we uh, actually had a class together and. Um, we, uh, it was a stand-up class, and as soon as I seen her uh, get on stage, we actually had the, the great Tim Joyce was teaching us, and uh, as soon as Robin got on stage, uh, I was taken back, because uh, she reminded me of my coffee, dark and sweet, and I like that. And, uh, and her comedy, her comedy is uh, it's very steamy, gets you kind of warm inside, but uh, too much of it will give you the shits. So, uh, but uh, no, you know what, I like Robin because, uh, you know, She's, she's very intelligent. She has like a master's degree and I don't know what the fuck it is, but she, uh, she does a lot of intelligent shit. And uh, she, she's very, she knows everybody stares at her tits. I know everybody in here is staring at him. She knows that uh, everybody stares at her body figure and everything. You know, she knows that no one's paying attention to her jokes. So, 
I thank Reverend for coming out. Uh, Xavier Lamont, we actually have a lot in common because like you said, we grew up in A-Town. Um, he comes from the west side, I come from the east side. And uh, the thing about Xavier, I don't know if you know us, Xavier used to have a company called Monomoy Marketing. Now, uh, I don't know if anybody knows where Monomoy is. Monomoy is in one of the fucked up projects in Aurora. And it's a gang infested fucking project with a bunch of gangster disciples. So this motherfucker named his company after Monomoy. Okay. I don't know why people don't know that shit. Like, you know, Chris and probably don't know it. All these white motherfuckers, they don't know it. But no, it's, it's a gang infested neighborhood, so he calls it Monomoy Marketing. Monomoy, you know, over there, they, you know, it's, it's a bunch of fucking cokeheads. They deal coke, hang out with strippers, which is pretty much what fucking XL does anyway. <laughs> but, uh, but no, I do, uh, actually, I think that's his uh, company's mission statement, hanging out with hookers and shit like that. Uh, XL's a very complex person. Um, he fits the stereotypical black man that's always getting in trouble with the law. But because he's Jewish, he has the money to get himself out of trouble. <laughs> so that's always a good thing. Uh, every time XL goes to court, he's always going in there dressed like a pimp, but he gets treated like a hoe. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I do thank him for coming out. Uh, Patrick Newson. Um, the first time I seen Pat, uh, he was performing at uh, Comedy of the Tap, and um, you know I was just I was in shock when I saw Pat on stage. I really was. I was taken back because I always wanted to know uh, what it was like to see Baby Huey in real life, <laughs> and uh, to see him do uh, stand up. I was like, this is off the hook. I was like, oh shit, get a cartoon in real life and some fucked up comedy. I like that. Uh, you know when I spoke to Pat about uh, doing a birthday party here, uh, it was originally just gonna be a birthday party. It wasn't gonna be a roast or anything. And uh, the first thing he said when he saw the lineup was, why am I not on it? I'm like, well, because I wanted my favorite comedians <laughs> up here. That's why. <laughs> uh, Pat, you know, he's always giving me advice on, uh, on my stage presence and everything, because I'm always here on the open mics. Every now and then I take a class here. And uh, I know we get a lot of jabs on my ex-wife. And uh, one thing Pat knows is that when I get up here, I do jokes about my ex-wife. The anger kind of takes over. And, uh, you know, he sees it. And he tells me all the time, he's always, always telling me, you know what, you guys stop being so angry because if she ever winds up dead, we know who killed her. <laughs> well, you know, the thing with Pat is, is that, uh, you know, when he does his, uh, his political bits and his anger takes over and his punchlines die, well, we know who killed him. <laughs> so. <laughs> David Franks, I, I don't know, he's like the fucking oddball up here. Um, <laughs> He was talking a lot of shit earlier. He was. I was going to treat his mouth like a Snickers bar and pack it full of nuts. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but I know that would keep him satisfied. I don't do that shit. Dave Franks went out. Uh, you know, yeah, when everybody saw the lineup, they were sitting here, they were going through the lineup like, David Franks? Like, Matt Druff is like, what the fuck? What's he up here for? You know, before David Frank came out here, we had to make sure to check his ankle bracelet because Toys R Us is just right across the street. <laughs> make sure he don't get out of there. Uh, Joe Larkin. Let's get up for Joe. Joe is the oldest, oldest comic up here. Uh, Joe was actually one of the first uh, comedians when I started hanging out at Comedy of the Tab. He approached me and, um, you know, to, to go on stage. Like, you know, Rudy, what am I going to see on stage? And I think the only reason he was doing that because he wanted to see my act before he died. <laughs> but since he dies every time on stage, I guess it really doesn't matter. So, the thing about Joe is uh, every time I see Joe get on stage, um, as soon as he gets up there, I take my cell phone on and I push 9 1. <laughs> Just in case. Just in case. Joe, Joe does his joke. <laughs> He does his joke about a, a hermaphrodite, and you go tell a hermaphrodite to go fuck themselves, and then he makes his facial expression. And I'm just sitting there, I'm like, oh shit. I don't know if he's gonna have a grabber, or you know, what's going on. Gotta keep that finger on the one. Uh, Kat Rabarski, give it up for Kat Rabarski. I love Kat. Um, you know, she comes out. I, I saw her at Comedy Under the Tap one time, too, and uh, very, very funny lady. Um, Kat actually uh, writes with a good friend of mine, Joe DeGan, who's in the audience. And uh, they write for uh, this little sketch thing called uh, Sketchy People, which actually describes her comedy on stage. <laughs> Very sketchy. But uh, no, but uh, I like Kat because she's sexy. I will, I will poke that thickness with a quickness. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Kristen Toomey, this drunk ass Irish woman, always fucking shit up. She has the most, aside from me, and I think I'd sell, she has the, like the most bipolar fucking Facebook page. She really does. You know, she's part of, uh, she's the co-founder, or actually the founder of Box Heart Comedy, co-producer in there. And uh, she actually went and made this Facebook page called Boxcar Hobos. And uh, if she fucks up another showcase, that's exactly what she's going to be. <laughs> so, Peters, um, everybody's been dogging your name, bro, and it just sounds like a really, really B-rated fucking porn movie. It does, it does. Um, so actually, uh, yeah, we did, we did a, a showcase for uh, Mark Beretta in Hodgkins, I think it was. That was a racist ass room. Um, and uh, the thing about Salty is, uh, you know, um, on his Facebook, he goes off in his political rants uh, a lot of time. And, um, you know, the thing is, he, he goes on and, and then he just snaps. And I was like, man, you know, I think we're Mexicans, white America don't give a fuck. <laughs> you know, they, they don't care. But then we mean Malty, mean Malty. yeah, Malty, yeah. Uh, Salty is, uh, we're very light skinned. And, um, you know, we're, we're what called, are called coconuts where it's, uh, you know, it's like a derogatory term for Hispanics that are, you know, either educated or don't act Hispanic enough, which means we're brown on the outside, uh, white on the inside. Uh, but in Salty's case, it's more of uh, the reverse. He's like white on the inside, brown on the inside, because uh, I just think he's full of shit with his Facebook posts. <laughs> uh, that's why. <laughs> no way, Jose. No uh, this guy over here, he's with Why So Funny, this blonde, pot-headed, vampire-looking motherfucker over here <laughs> is, uh, he's part of a production group. Uh, he's actually the only Caucasian in that group. Ain't that right, white boy Roy? <laughs> he is the only guy. You know what, I did see, uh, I do go to Why So Funny showcase. I always show them love. And uh, they did a show at the Foundry a couple weeks ago. And uh, he was the opening act. And No Way Jose goes out there and he does like a strip tease. He drops his fucking pants, he's got like this jock strap on, and he's just sitting there flopping around and everything, and I was just sitting like, what the fuck is going on? I'm like, you know, it's, it's reflective of his, his comedy on stage, very uncoordinated and limp. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, you know what? Uh, no, I don't have an accomplished body of work. I've been doing comedy for like seven months. I actually put this fucking roast together. That's how arrogant I am. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but no, you know what, I do appreciate everybody coming out here. Um, the, last, the last three years of my life have been really fucked up. Uh, I've been going through a lot of shit. And just the fact you guys made it out here means a lot to me. Uh, this comedy thing has been really good to me and everybody's been uh, welcoming me with open arms. Uh, let's give it up for Dave Sinker. Yeah. For uh, letting us use this, uh, this beautiful establishment. And I'd like to thank everybody for coming out here. Uh, it means a lot to me. And uh, fuck all y'all for talking shit to me. <laughs> y'all kissing my ass. Uh, let's bring it up, Dale. Close this out. Yeah. Woo! Good job. I want another hug. Yeah. <laughs> Rudy Ruiz, you guys. That is our show. Thanks for coming out. Please tip the waitresses. One more time for the day as they work hard up here. Tip them up. And one more time for the birthday boy, Rudy Roy. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Alton. Happy birthday. Thank you, sir. Happy birthday. Thank you, sir. Thank you, honey. Thank you. Good shit, Rudy. Thanks a lot, bro. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. That was good, dude.